Hi everyone, welcome back to Beef Reacts, and today we are going to be watching... One second. We are going to be watching Madara vs. Eyes and Naruto vs. Bleach. Two shows I know... Next to nothing about. And by next to nothing about, I've seen probably most of the major fights in Naruto. And I've seen up to the... I've definitely seen up to when Shippuden starts, but I didn't really get into Shippuden and, and Bleach. Um, just never got too, too into the show. And it's a show that I definitely want to watch. It just, I've heard it's kind of like, it takes a bit for the show to like actually, I don't want to say start, start, but that's at least some of the stuff I heard. Um, that being said, I know these, at least Modder is the big bad from Naruto, and I've definitely seen that fight because it's dope. This episode of Death or a gift you over. I'm gonna be honest with you, we're just gonna skip right, right past the uh, sponsor and adder. Madara Uchiha, the legendary messianic shinobi from Naruto. Sosuke Aizen, the soul reaper who stood upon the heavens from Bleach. We may dream of glory, but these two have the will to power to take it by force and claim a seat among the gods. They're the biggest, baddest anime bosses around, and not even death can stop them. Ghost versus zombie, let's go. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Ten years. Oh, I guess it's the endless destruction. Countless dead. A plot to conquer the planet. The ninja world was at war. For the fourth time, only one man could save humanity from itself from beyond the grave. The same man who orchestrated this war in the first place in order to end all wars forever. Madara Uchiha. From birth, war was the only thing the young Madara knew, and there was no ninja he liked fighting more than Hashirama Senju. They're basically Ninja Romeo and Juliet. Hashirama, that... Is that Tsunade's great-grandfather? I know, I know I'm gonna get things wrong, but like, I know... I know a lot about Naruto from not watching Naruto, specifically Shippuden, and I know a lot... I don't, I know next to nothing about Bleach. If you were to tell me just off the rip who I think is probably going to get it. I don't know enough about Bleach and the Soul Reaper Society and like what their powers can do. So I definitely have a bias towards Madara. Um, just to be, just to be off the rip up front about it. If we're going to be guessing more and as I learn more about them. I'd be, I'd be interested in knowing, you know what I mean? Belonging to opposing clans. Mo so his first name is Madara Uchiha. He's part of the traitorous uh, Uchiha clan. I, I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna set off a lot of people's, uh, uh, I don't even know, get a lot of the hate from this, but like, never been a fan of the Uchihas, even in show, in universe. I just, I'm just not a fan of the Uchiha clan. I'll be real. The only good one's Itachi. Not even Sasuke, just Itachi. Can't even say his name right. That's... Fuck it. Uh, he's 5'10". Alright, nice. 157 pounds. Former leader of the Uchiha clan. Co-founder of Konohaga Curry. Resurrected via Ido Tensei. Favorite food, Inarishizushi? I botched that. Hobbies, falconry, and 5D chess. <laughs> That's Madara and Hashirama were forced to battle each other for years, all the while dreaming of a better future. Their bromance eventually overcame their clan's differences, and the two groups merged, creating the village of Konoha. But Madara wasn't satisfied with Hashirama's dream of peace through cooperation. He desired an immortal peace through total domination. Everyone else thought that was crazy, so he bounced, and then he came back to wage war against the village he helped build. Well, that didn't last long, huh? Madara's megalomania was perhaps fated, considering he is, in fact, the reincarnation of the demigod Indra Otsutsuki and the inheritor of his immensely powerful chakra. Basically physical and spiritual energy that makes ninja magic. Madara specializes in fire and... So he has the gun by and comma, sword, fire style, jutsu, harish... Har 
Hashirama Cells. I am so bad. I am so sorry. Regeneration, Wood Style Jutsu, Storm Style Light Fang, sense, Sensing Technique, Chakra Absorption, and he can summon the Tentails. Wood Style Jutsus, which just seems irresponsible to put those together, like a gender reveal party waiting to happen. His wood is especially impressive, considering it's the only style of elemental jutsu that can create life. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Madara can even use his goon bite. <laughs> Uh, I can always count on Boomstick for a good sex show. To absorb ninjutsu and return it right back to sender. You know you're a badass when you can take on armies with just a friggin' fan. Madara has torn apart hordes of ninja without breaking a sweat, taken a beating from every tailed beast at once, and even defeated the five Kage, some of the strongest shinobi in the world. The Raikage is even stated to be fast enough to move at light speed. And even weaker ninja like Orochimaru have dodged literal photon beams. But Madara is great. And there is the... I can't call it yet because we don't know who's faster than faster than the speed of light. But if there's one thing about death battle, it's when there's somebody faster than the speed of light, they're probably going to win. Greatest tool is the one born from his very bloodline. The eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. These magical eyes massively enhance his perception down to the priest precision and accuracy, limited preconnection, sea chakra flow, jutsu copying, genjutsu illusions in Izanagi Izanami, Eternal Mengeko Sharing Gun, Perfect Sasano, Dual Swords, Yasaka, whatever. I need to shave my beard because it, it feels wrong right now, but evil disturbing disturbance will cellular level allowing him to predict movements see the flow of chakra and summon the mighty perfect susano the sharingan can also cast a genjutsu that'll trap anyone that looks at it in an illusion and even break them out of those same illusions in sasuke's case even ones as strong as itachi sukuyomi which can warp your perception of time Itachi used it on a fellow Uchiha and made her live out her entire life in the span of one one hundredth of one one thousandth of one one millionth of a second. And when she died in the illusion, she died for real. If Sasuke could break out of it, Madara could too, easily. And after grafting some of Hashirama's cells onto himself, he now- Would always have a piece of his Romeo inside him. <laughs> this is my ship, Wiz. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> he now- Let's go, Boomstick! For- Toxic ships! I'm with it! Not only gained a healing factor strong enough to regenerate from having half his body vaporized, but also the terrifying Rinnegan. AKA the big chungus of all eye magic! Dove path. Attractive and repulsive forces. Summons meteors. Human path. Read minds. Blood cells. Petropath. Absorb chakra. Naraka path. Interrogation. Restoration. Ashura path. Cyborg. Augmentation. Animal path. Summons monsters. Outer path. Summons the demonic statue. Black receiver. He just seems overpowered. Like, uh... Rene Shardy Gun. Infinite, uh, Sukuyomi. God, no... Nativity of a world of The ringy eyes let Madara absorb chakra and ninjutsu. Create invisible limbo clones. See and remove your soul from your body. And summon giant ass meteors. As if he needed any more fucking powers. While the Rinnegan lacks some of the Sharingan... While Madara has not shown all of the six path abilities granted by the Renegon, they have been used by Nagato, who has therefore he should have be capable of the same. Okay. On his unique abilities, he can switch between them at will. After tearing the ninja world a new asshole, Madara was finally defeated in a- Ninja's use of hand seals uncommon for dojutsu techniques, and their identical shapes and sizes, Madara likely creates meteors with chakra instead of pulling them up from out of space. A climactic battle for the ages by his BFF, and thus the life of a legendary shinobi came to an end in the arms of his one true love. Or did it? All right, this, this is gonna get pretty crazy, but just bear with me. Fearing a defeat in battle, Madara set a time-delayed jutsu that would posthumously rewrite reality and bring him back to life. And it worked! So Madara tricked another Uchiha, Obito, into witnessing his best friend murdering his other best friend. Then he tasked Obito with manipulating the world into another war. Meanwhile, he gave his own Renegon to Nagato with the goal of getting it back after he was brought back to life the second time with the Outer Path because he died again. Make sense? Nah, that'll never work. <laughs> You're right, it didn't! So Obito went out and got the Renegon back from Nakato's corpse, because he died. Then Kabuto brought Madara back to life, and he got his eyes back from Obito after some backstabbing. Then 
I only know one thing about Naruto. Fuck Kabuto. Fuck that little snake-looking bitch boy. Fuck you, Kabuto. And he sealed the awakened Tentails within himself in order to gain ultimate power and create the world's greatest nap time ever. <gasps> Look what you people have done to him. You'd think Tentails' power would be awesome, but those dinky hate balls of doom are so lame. Don't let their size fool you. These truth-seeking orbs are in another league. The Ten Tails is strong enough. Ten Tails Jin Kurichi. Jin. Jin Churiki. God, I cannot say words today. Improved regeneration, six paths senjutsu, truth seeking balls, yin release, matter creation, lightning dispatch, yang release, life creation, flight. Okay. To wipe continents off the map, and the orbs can be shaped into weapons that will completely disintegrate anything they come into contact with. Not even ninja resurrected through Edo Tensei like Minato could regenerate limbs lost to the truth-seeking orbs, which means they had to erase his literal spirit itself. Madara's power was so insane he was considered comparable to the original Sage of Six Paths, the dude who helped create the friggin' moon. And when Madara created meteors, they were large enough to show up against the curvature of the Earth. Measuring their size and estimating the height at which Madara lifted them, they'd have to possess a potential energy of at least 372 petatons of TNT. You know, they do everything they can to just make people badass. But, like, when manga could do this shit, do they ever think of this power scaling? Do they ever think, you know, maybe someday someone's gonna look at the slight curve of the Earth and be like, yeah, this is what the size should be. And this is how powerful this attack is. I don't think they do. I just, I, I feel like it's a little silly, right? It's, it's, it's all in fun and entertainment, but it feels a little silly. He was even fast enough to keep up with Eight Gates Guy, who kicked hard enough to bend space. Madara even has an attack where he hawks light speed loogies. Considering even base Madara has displayed speeds on par with light timing ninja, we know Ten Tails Madara would have to be significantly faster thanks to the Ten Tails' power. With virtually no one left to oppose him, Madara's plot was finally in the end game. He awakened the Rin Sharingan. Successfully cast the infinite Sukuyomi, summoned a giant forest around the world, created the valley of the end in battle. Endured an insult from every tailed beast at once. Fought Hashirama for 24 hours straight. Survived Night Guy, which can bend space. Matched Sage of Six Paths, Naruto and Sasuke. And defeated the tailed beasts, Five Kage, Mike Guy, and Harish Hashirama. So he defeated God. Or at least a God, right? And then this is, this is, this is really the only question. I knew Madara was, like, OP. I didn't know he was this OP, though. And, like, on top of that... Like, I don't know enough about Bleach to know how strong these people can get. So, like, I just... I just don't know how the fuck this dude can compare to this. And with like, the God Tree know. summoned, he cast the infinite Tsukuyomi, spreading the tree's roots across the entire planet and capturing every single person in the world. This would enslave all of humanity in an endless dream world, free of conflict forever. Peace through total domination. Manipulating this tree with his chakra would have involved physically spreading its roots through and around the entire earth in mere moments. Estimating the tree's mass and the speed at which the roots were moved, his chakra must have released an energy exceeding one Yoda ton of TNT. And Yoda ton. What the fuck is a Yoda ton? And how is he... I, I, no, 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 Matthew, it is okay. It is okay, but this seems ridiculous. This was with just one jutsu. Is there a character that could possibly even touch Madara Uchiha? Kishimoto himself didn't even know. Madara's power was so overwhelming, the only thing that could take him down was treachery. Even the man with the magic eyes couldn't see that coming. All that was left was his old- We love to see that, but that's tough. Am I- I'm off screen. I- I need to get better at knowing what I'm doing here. Okay. Did- was Kabuto the one who betrayed him? Friend Hashirama, there to comfort him in his final moments. Just like Romeo and Juliet, or never was there a story of more woe than this of Hashirama and his mother, bro. I read it in iambic pentameter. Is there a gas leak in here? Now the real fun begins. 
the soul. Hey, no ad this time. I say that, I'm gonna get one probably in the next like two minutes. It'll be karma. Soul Society was in chaos. One of its leading Shinigami was set to be executed under suspicious circumstances. A band of humans from the living world had invaded to save her, and Sosuke Aizen, captain of the 5th division of the Gotei 13, was dead. Murdered. What dastardly mastermind could have been behind all this? He'd have to be a galaxy-brained 5D chess master. The man responsible was, in fact, Sosuke Aizen. Little is known about the man's past. Sosuke Aizen. Age, hundreds of years old, height, six foot one. He's got the height advantage on Madara. Three inches may not be a lot, but to me it's everything. Weight, 163. Species, Shinigami, former captain of the Gotai's 13th, 13th 5th Division, former leader of the Aram car used to teach Just only that he isn't a man a human man but a soul reaper these shinigami are spiritual beings who ferry lost souls to the afterlife and purify those who have turned evil in the living world they're badass anime wizard grim reaper swordsmen though aizen himself was hardly that cool i mean just look at those glasses dork but this clark kent was harboring a secret aizen had spent years attempting to develop the means to ultimate I see an ordinary so cannot commit power, ruining the lives of many of his colleagues via his twisted experiments. Oh, so when Eisen does it, he's a super villain, but when you do it to me, it's shut the hell up, Boomstick. You're under NDA, and I know about the stuff you've done. As a Shinigami, Eisen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Yeah, uh, fucking Boomstick, my man. The Shinigami uses the spiritual power created from their soul and use it with a Zenbak. Kuto to fight against the hollows. Well, how do you define spiritual power? Because the will, technically speaking, in real life, willpower is a muscle that has a finite usage, and this has been studied and studied and studied and studied, technically. But because it's an ethereal thing, it's almost, it's theoretically infinite, you know? From a thematic standpoint, the human soul is indomitable. From a real-life, science-y standpoint, if you keep a cake in front of you and you've had an entire fucking day and you tell yourself you're not going to eat cake anymore, if it's there, you're probably going to eat the cake. Um, again, this is just... It, it has a lot to do with like habit building and like a lot of different stuff, but it's like really fascinating. Like science. His body is made of reishi, being spirit matter, and empowered by rare yoku, being spirit energy, and to reishi, being NDA, and I know about the stuff. You've As a shinigami, Aizen's body is made of reishi, being spirit matter, and empowered by rare yoku, being spirit energy. Entities made of reishi are completely invisible to anyone without specific supernatural awareness, though a shinigami's body is still tangible and can be damaged normally. And with his Rei Ryoku energy, Aizen can create incredibly powerful blasts. He's so strong, weaker beings will literally disintegrate if they get too close to him. This is due to his Reiatsu, a localized spiritual pressure exerted as a result of his enormous power. He also knows tons of Kido, or spells. He can create force fields, but- Invisibility, Reishi manipulation, incredible Reiatsu, Kido, million Eska- Escudo, Bakudo, Kyo. This time I'm not going to read all of them because I don't know what they mean. Kyoku Sugetsu, Soul Cutting Sword, Complete Hypnosis. And the light around him to make him impossible to detect. Fire concentrated bolts of lightning and absorb the energy from his surroundings to make giant ass energy dragons. Perhaps his deadliest Kido is Kurohitsugi. After an extensive incantation, Aizen surrounds his target in an enormous black coffin that distorts space and time and tears its victims apart. Aizen's plotting finally came to fruition during the invasion of the Soul Society, where he faked his death using his greatest weapon, his Zanpakuto, Kyoka Swigetsu. A Shinigami Zanpakuto is a magical sword that possesses a sentient spirit. Kyoka Soigetsu gives Aizen complete control over his victim's senses the instant they lay eyes on the sword. This complete hypnosis traps its victims in a nearly perfect illusion that Aizen can manipulate at will, making himself virtually immune to attacks while his opponents are sitting ducks. Well, like, I feel like in this world, because in almost all bullshit anime, 
And when I say bullshit, I don't mean any disrespect towards the series, the show, or anything like that. But there's some form of, like, sensing energy nearby. So just keep your eyes closed and, like, I feel like you got this, right? It's so strong that it kept a group of exo reapers known as the Visor trapped for over a hundred years without them even knowing it. It's one of the most broken powers ever and the definition of anime bullshit. But it was all Thank worth it when he perfected his ultimate creation, the Hogyoku, an immensely powerful reality. Although the Hyo Hogyoku itself has no explicit limits, the, po the amount of power it grants to the person is dictated by the wielder's will. The moment their will falters, the Hikioka will reject warping device that, quote, materializes the user's wishes. In Aizen's case, it realized his desire to become the strongest. It evolves Aizen to boost power, nullifies previous weaknesses for generation, Ryuzatsu indetectable to weaker Shinigami, Fregor, and old being in the universe. With it, he can heal any of his wounds, even when half his body is vaporized. And more importantly, it exponentially increases his power over time through evolution by turning him into a horrifying butterfly monster man. A being eventually strong enough to dethrone and replace the Soul King, the deity that controls the cosmic balance. Even a minor disruption to the Soul King's influence led to the three worlds of Earth, the Soul Society, and Hueco Mundo to start physically collapsing. And it implied that the Soul King has to be outputting enough. The only souls we see in the living world are those from Earth. Since Soul Society and Hyoko Mundo are meant to be home to the souls of the dead, it's safe to assume they're the same size as of energy to hold all these places together at all times. Considering each should be roughly the same size, this would require an energy of over 140 zettatons of TNT. Now let's ask a question. What's bigger, a Yoda ton or a Zeta ton? Because I'm gonna be real with you. If I can't see the amount of zeros, I don't fucking know. Isn't as powerful enough to vaporize mountains as a side effect of a sword swing. His casual energy blasts can disintegrate huge chunks of the earth, and he can take on armies with just his Ryatsu alone. He even defeated the rest of the Gote 13 without so much as breaking a sweat. So he should be way stronger than Soul Society heavy hitters like Kenpachi, who sliced this 100. The asteroid size is calculated by comparing it to the Shankon Maku, a barrier that covers all of the Siriti, which has had 30% of its size stated to be 200 li, or 100 kilometers, thus making its total size 333 kilometers. 120 kilometer wide asteroid to pieces. That's roughly the width of Great Britain. An asteroid of this size would have to carry a kinetic energy of at least 44 petatons of TNT. And Nizen was so badass, he literally transcended other Shinigami in power. He was in a whole other dimension from the rest of them. Until he fought Ichigo Kurosaki. The battle we've all been waiting for. Way before this in the Soul Society arc, Ichigo was already as fast as lightning. And by this point, after all his power boosts, he'd even be faster than light. And hell, even weaker characters like this lady can dodge light beams. Though their fight was epic, Ichigo had transcended the Shinigami as well, and even Aizen himself. Feeding upon his insecurities, the Hogyoku abandoned Aizen, who was quickly defeated and imprisoned within the bottommost level of the Soul Society's prison. Aizen was left alone. His great power he sacrificed so much to achieve was gone forever. Or was it? Somehow he ended up getting even stronger than before. But what made him so strong? Could it be? The chair? It's not the chair. It could theoretically be due to the chair's restraints keeping his Ryatsu from properly releasing, building it up within him until he was stronger in base than he was at his previous max. Nah, it's definitely the chair. And, ooh, since the chair could still hold him after he got stronger, wouldn't that make it even stronger than him? Even stronger than the Soul King? All hail the mighty chair Sama, most powerful being in all of Bleach. I get he it. Me and Boomsticker, boys! He survived Iki Ichigo's final uh, Getsuga Tenshio, endured incineration from his own Rietsu, moved, moves FTE to top tier Shinigami, stopped a Hado from Tessai, caught Ichigo's Bankai with his finger, one shot a being immune to Rietsu, matched Soul King 
you watch in combat and defeated the Gotai 13, the Vizor Right. Managed to hold his own against the Quincy Warlord Yua, who absorbed the power of the Soul King himself. He even used Kyoka Soigetsu to trick him, and Yuha's a dude who can literally see every possible future all at the same time. All according to Keikaku, bitches! And after standing among the gods themselves, Aizen returned to captivity and pondered the meaning of his existence. Even trapped in a prison, sealed off in a different dimension with a 20,000 year sentence, he remains the most dangerous being in the world. Who knows what schemes are brewing behind those cold, calculating eyes. No compassion, no empathy, only the drive for power. No one has ever stood at the top. Neither you, nor me. I'm gonna be real here. It, it, I, they tried giving him all he could got. I don't see how he wins. I feel like Madara had a longer opening. I feel like Madara had more shit going on. Like, he has ultimate hypnosis if Madara looks at him. But, like, isn't Madara's whole thing... Like, we heard about how Sasuke could break out of this ultimate genjutsu easily, which is hypnosis. So, like, I I just... I, 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 think, I think it might be a clap, all right? I feel bad for Aizen. From now on, I alone will stand at the top. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you want the confidence of an anime supervillain, check out Blue Chew. Uh -huh. This is actually a really nice Friday animation. Uh huh. You can see me. I can see everything. This reminds me of a. Uh, uh, oh my god, I muted it by accident. You guys remember Sonic for Hire? Dude, I, I'd love to go back and watch all the old Machinima uh, shows and like react to those. That would be so cool. I used to love Sonic for Hire. I used to love Sanity Not Included. I'd love. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Aizen. Also, good showing. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little confused. But like <laughs> Apollo tricks. Don't get so full of yourself. <laughs> They're going to use the Ten Tails truth seeking balls to destroy his soul, aren't they? Because at the end of the. Because they said the thing about the fourth Hokage that I, I'm not going to say that's what's going to happen, but I feel like that's what's going to happen.
battle, the pounding of my heart, the taste of my own blood. I love it! <laughs> the voice acting is really fucking good, too. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had me there, you tricky bastard. Nothing escapes my illusions, human. Know your place. <laughs> Sick, that was so cool. He fake died twice for his 5D chess plan. Well, Eisen only fake died once. Eisen and Madara were extremely evenly matched in raw power and speed. By our calculations, Madara spreading the God Tree's roots with his chakra was about seven times more powerful than the best that Eisen could scale to with his rare Yoku. And both ended up being roughly as fast as each other. While there are a range of possible feats and numbers to go with to determine their limits, the point is they're always going to be close to even. Which means the main thing that mattered here were their powers and how they countered each other. Madara's enormous variety of abilities eventually overwhelmed Aizen. While Soul Reapers like Aizen may be invisible to regular people, the Renegon allowed Madara to see invisible spiritual beings like- <clears throat> From regenerating because they nullify the Jutsu, and given the similarities between Chaka and Ryoku, and the fact that Minito's soul was damaged even out- I FUCKING CALLED IT, DUDE! Fucking called like his own limbo clones. Hell, the Rinnegan lets you see and remove human souls, and that's exactly what a soul reaper is. Both Chakra and Rare Yoku utilize spirit energy and operated in similar ways, being formed into attacks like ninjutsu and keto. That meant that Madara's ability to absorb ninjutsu allowed him to nullify the vast majority of Aizen's range attacks and even dispel his force fields. And despite how OP Aizen's complete hypnosis was, Sharingan users can break out of illusions no sweat, even ones as powerful as Itachi's Sukuyomi. And since Madara can switch between the Rinnegan and the Sharingan at will, he'd be able to break out of an illusion anytime he wanted. Aizen's illusions are nearly perfect, but fellow Captain Unohana was able to subconsciously notice its flaws. With an eye as perceptive as the Sharingan, which can spot imperfections in Genjutsu's all the time, it was only inevitable that Madara would be able to quickly break out. However, the same couldn't be said for Aizen, who never showed any resistance to the kind of mental illusions Madara can create. Even setting illusions aside, the sheer quantity of offensive options at Madara's disposal, whether it be his clones, meteors, or monsters summoned by the Rinnegan, kept Aizen constantly on the back foot. But none of that mattered if they couldn't kill each other, and both had pretty insane healing factors that could recover from just about anything, except for those pesky eight balls of doom. Madara's truth-seeking orbs were capable of completely, molecularly annihilating spiritual beings and preventing them from regenerating. And, again, Aizen was a spiritual being. Since Aizen lacked the ability to do the same irreversible damage- Aizen performed lightspeed feats. They would likely end up much faster. However, based on further calculations, that they'd still upscale to roughly- Image to Madara, the ghost of the Uchiha had exactly what he needed to put this actual ghost down for good. Aizen was an unbelievably overpowered foe, but Madara's own powers, illusions, and devastating truth-seeking orbs allowed him to crush the ex-Shinigami. Sosuke should have kept his eyes in the prize. In. Do you feel any shame at all? Eh, moderately. Ha! Double pun. Suck it, Wiz. The winner is Madara Uchiha. <laughs> Alright, uh... Thank you for watching. So that was, uh... Madara vs. Aizen, the death battle. Here are my final thoughts. So, I think I want to watch Bleach. Um, and I said before that I started Bleach, I don't know any of the characters' name besides maybe Ichigo. I have seen Bleach up until the point of the orange-haired girl getting her abilities. And I don't remember any of the plot. So, I do apologize if it wouldn't be a fully blind watch but i'd be interested in watching it um 
I would skip the filler arcs, though. Unless they're important. I know there's, like, a certain thing in communities where it's like, watch this, don't watch this. This is canon, this isn't canon. I'd probably follow one of those guides. Um, but if you'd be interested in me watching Bleach, let me know in the comments below. Just because it's, it's the only one of the big three I don't know like I, I know fuck all about basically i know a lot about naruto i know a lot about one piece no nothing about bleach um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching uh if you don't mind just like comment subscribe really helps me out and i'll catch you guys tomorrow